Hi, my name is Julio Rivera. I'm an activist, journalist, adventurer, veteran, television presenter, and businessman. I've covered many of the major historical events going on around the world over the past several years, and after watching regime changes, conflict, and historic elections globally, I've come to the conclusion that the most underreported crisis in the world today can be defined in only one word, Maui. That's why I've decided to dedicate my time to educating people everywhere and exposing the dangers that exist on the devices that we've become tethered to and depend on for so many reasons in our day-to-day -day life. Welcome to This Week in Maui. On this week in malware, we'll be covering an upgraded version of FT code ransomware is now equipped with password stealing capabilities targeting browsers and email services. Misinformation regarding the coronavirus pandemic is spreading like wildfire on the internet. What are the major platforms like Facebook and YouTube doing to combat this latest scourge of fake news? And like its fictional counterpart, Robinhood ransomware steals from the rich, but can also steal from the poor, government agencies, and individuals in every income bracket. Although FT code ransomware has been prevalent since 2013, it has resurfaced with password stealing capabilities. This file encrypting threat steals saved passwords and credentials from popular browsers and email clients. FT code ransomware can scan the default location where the credentials are stored, extract the data, and upload it to the server that the ransomware author controls. Propagation and encryption. Cyber criminals dealing with data locking Trojans tend to use several classic propagation methods like emails containing macro laced attachments, fraudulent application updates, as well as fake pirated versions of popular software. Often, ransomware threats tend to target a wide variety of files to guarantee that enough damage will be done and the user may consider paying up the ransom. Usually files like images, documents, videos, audio files, etc. will be the primary target of threats like the FT code ransomware. The FT code ransomware will run a scan to locate these files and then trigger its encryption process. After encrypting a file, the FT code ransomware applies a new extension at the end of its file name, .ft code. For example, if you've had a photo that was called paper-pale.jpg, originally after the encryption process is completed, the file will be named to paper-pale.jpg.ft code. To ensure that the user is less likely to retrieve any of the corrupted files for free, the FT code ransomware also will wipe out the shadow volume copies from the compromised host. Furthermore, the FT code ransomware will also tamper with the system restore module and disable it so that getting any of the data back will be nearly impossible. The ransom note. Then the FT code ransomware will drop a ransom note that goes by the name read underscore me underscore now dot htm. In the note, the attackers instruct the victim on how to download and install a TOR browser because their payment processing is carried out on a TOR based payment portal. The authors of the FT code ransomware state that within the first three days of the attack, the ransom fee will be $500. However, if the victim fails to pay up within this deadline, the ransom fee will begin increasing periodically. Between three and five days, the ransom is 2,500. Between five and 10 days, the ransom is 5,000. Between 10 and 30 days, the ransom is a whopping $25,000. Finally, the attackers claim that in the case that the fee is not processed within 30 days of the attack occurring, the decryption key will be wiped out permanently which means that there will be no way for the victim to retrieve any of their encrypted files. Do not trust cyber criminals. Their threats, as well as their promises, are often just smoke and mirrors.
Lately, social media has been crawling with fake news, conspiracy theories, and outright lies regarding the coronavirus pandemic. These falsities are dangerous on many levels as the world is still dealing with this deadly new plague. If you've had misinformation appear on your Facebook feed and have liked, reacted, or commented on it, you can expect to start seeing messages in your news feed alerting you that Facebook has removed the post containing the inaccurate or fictitious information. In April of 2020, Guy Rosen, Facebook's Vice President of Integrity, said in a post that the messages will be shown to those who've interacted with these quote-unquote fake posts that Facebook went on to remove. The alerts will connect people to a page displaying COVID-19 myths that have been debunked by the World Health Organization. Rosen was quoted in his post as saying, We, meaning Facebook, want to connect people who may have interacted with harmful misinformation about the virus with the truth from authoritative sources in case they see or hear these claims again off of Facebook. The Facebook alerts will specifically pertain to coronavirus-related misinformation that may possibly lead to physical harm. When it comes to other misinformation, Facebook CEO Mark Zuckerberg said that after fact-checkers rate a post as false, the Facebook algorithm will reduce its distribution as well as apply warning labels with more context and hunt down and flag duplicates. In March of 2020, Facebook flagged about 40 million COVID-19 related posts with misinformation based on around 4,000 articles that were vetted by its fact-checking partners. That approach is apparently working. It said, when people saw those warning labels, 95% of the time they did not go on to view the original content. Besides flagging what could potentially be bad information, Rosen said that Facebook also removed hundreds of thousands of pieces of misinformation that could lead people to harm themselves. Examples of misinformation we've removed include harmful claims like drinking bleach cures the virus and theories like physical distancing is ineffective in preventing the disease from spreading. Facebook is trying to make accurate coronavirus information easier to find. It will launch a new section on its COVID-19 information center called Get the Facts. It will feature articles that have been fact-checked by its partners that debunk the widespread misinformation regarding the coronavirus. Facebook news curation team will select the articles and will update the sections weekly. Soon, the Get the Facts info section will also be added to Facebook news in the United States. What other tech giants are fighting the misinformation war? Facebook is not alone in waging war against the danger of fake news related to the pandemic. After the coronavirus came to prominence in March of 2020, that month saw a slew of coronavirus related scams, myths, and misinformation spring up from either cyber criminals or people who've blindly forwarded messages without vetting either the information or the source. There's been a lot of misinformation disseminated regarding possible cures for the disease. There have been YouTube videos that claim that there is a connection between the virus and the location of 5G wireless towers. In fact, popular videos that perpetuate this false theories and have racked up hundreds of thousands of views have led to attacks on cellular towers. In early April 2020, YouTube said it would limit the spread of this false 5G theory by suppressing the content that makes similar claims. As you can clearly see, this isn't just a problem for Facebook, of course, as all of the social media networks and many other widely used apps are wrestling with it. In another extremely bizarre case, a tweet from a famous Indian actor placing blame for the coronavirus on journalists and Muslims called for both to be lined up and shot. The tweet stayed up on Twitter for almost a full day before the platform deleted it and permanently suspended the actor's account. The cyber criminals responsible for Robin Hood ransomware must have been inspired by the legendary bandit from English folklore Robin Hood, but this ransomware is not a heroic outlaw. Like most other threats of his kind, Robin Hood ransomware uses RSA and AES encryption algorithms and asks the victim to contact the malware owners through an Onion Tor website. The exact vector of distribution of the examined samples is unknown, 
Yet Robinhood likely spreads through unprotected remote desktop protocols or Trojans that have previously provided the attackers with access to the target system. Spam emails with malicious attachments or corrupted internet links are also a common propagation method of similar ransomware threats. Robinhood targets each system individually. Malware researchers have managed to reverse engineer one of the scarcely available samples of Robinhood ransomware, and their analysis has revealed some interesting features. Upon execution, the malware uses a specific command to disconnect all network shares from the infected computer, meaning that other computers from the same network are not encrypted via the connected shares. Rather, Robinhood targets each machine individually, which indicates that the attackers push the malicious payload to each individual computer through a domain controller or a framework like Empire PowerShell. Then the malware attempts to read a RSA encryption key from the Windows temporary folder. If it is unable to find such a key, Robinhood displays a message that the system cannot find the specified file and then quits its execution. If the search key is present, however, the ransomware continues with the file encryption. As a next step, the malware quits 181 Windows services related to the database, antivirus, and mail server programs, as well as any other software that can keep files open and prevent their encryption. Next, during this preparation phase, Robinhood clears events logs, shadow volume copies, and disables the Windows automatic repair function. Robinhood ransomware creates four ransom nodes. After the ransomware infiltrates the machine and the installation of its payload is complete, Robinhood ransomware starts the actual encryption, creating an AES key for each file. Then the AES key is locked up while the original file name is encrypted with the public RSA key and altered to the file format encrypted underscore plus random string and dot ENC underscore Robinhood as the file extension. This ransomware skips files in certain directories like program data, windows, boot, temp, program files, TMP, app data, system volume information, and others. Another uncommon feature of Robinhood is that it creates numerous log files named RF underscore S, RO underscore L, and RO underscore S in the C drive which are deleted after encryption is complete. The RF underscore S file logs the creation of ransom notes in each folder. However, the purpose of the other log files is not yet known. In some cases, a final message, done, enjoy buddy, smiley face, appears to indicate that encryption has been completed. During the encryption process, the ransomware creates four different ransom notes named underscore help, underscore help, underscore help dot HTML, underscore decrypt underscore files dot HTML, and underscore help, underscore important dot HTML, and underscore decryption, underscore readme dot HTML. These ransom notes inform the victim about what has happened to their files and state the Bitcoin address that should be used to make the ransom payment. The latest variants of Robinhood ransomware demand three Bitcoin for the decryption of one affected system and 13 Bitcoin for the entire network. Some of the older variants demanded seven Bitcoin for all affected systems. There are also reports which claim that some Robinhood ransomware samples threaten to impose a $10,000 penalty per day to victims who do not pay, starting from the fourth day of encryption. Another interesting detail that is not observed in many ransomware threats out there is a surprising claim made by its creators. They state they value the victim's privacy and would delete all data related to a particular user like IP addresses or encryption keys as soon as the ransom payment has been made. Also, Robinhood Ransomware's contact page says that ransom payments cannot be tracked as an individual Bitcoin address is set up freshly for each victim. The attackers insist on honesty as well. They offer to decrypt three files of up to 10 megabytes for free. Significant attacks of Robinhood ransomware. One of the known major attacks of Robinhood ransomware happened on May 7th, 
2019, when Baltimore, Maryland city government got paralyzed for weeks. News agencies reported at the time that the server of the city's administration had been breached by a hacking tool allegedly developed by the National Security Agency, which had landed in the hands of cyber criminals. Later, it was confirmed that the incident was caused by Robinhood ransomware. As a result of the attack, the city's entire digital content had been locked so that the government emails were down. No real estate transactions could be processed and no payments to city departments could be made online. Baltimore City Mayor Jack Young stated that the city would not pay the demanded ransom of 13 Bitcoin, equal to $100,000 at the time, while the FBI and Secret Service started an investigation. Another Robin Hood ransomware attack affected the network of the city of Greenwell, North Carolina in April of 2019. Responsible law authorities and cybersecurity experts are currently still working to solve that case as well and hope to land clues to prevent the next unwanted appearance of Robin Hood ransomware. You know, as I think about the dangers that exist online, not unlike the subjects we learned about in this video, I know I feel a lot better having an anti-malware program like Spy Hunter installed in my PC, providing me the protection I need against malware, and I think you should too. Spy Hunter 5's strongest features are found in its malware repair capabilities. Spy Hunter 5's remediation algorithms dive deep into your system to remove and address complex malware issues affecting PCs today. While many anti-malware products only flag and quarantine malware and ultimately fail to fully remediate the root problem, the Spy Hunter 5 remediation algorithm detects, quarantines, and programmatically repairs malware problems on your PC. Spy Hunter 5 is a powerful PC utility that repairs malware threats in many cases where other competing anti-malware and antivirus programs may fail. To detect and remove malware for free, go to enigmasoftware.com and download Spy Hunter today. Thanks for watching.